U.S. inflation progress stalls, rising more than expected. Welcome to Market Insights, I'm Peter Devlin. Underlying inflation rose more than forecast in September, representing a pause in the road towards moderating price pressures. Fed officials have become more confident that inflation is easing back towards their 2% goal. But does a hotter reading chill a dovish outlook? Joining me now to dig into those numbers is Andy Schneider, Senior US Economist at BNP Paribas. Welcome Andy, thank you very much for joining us. So starting off looking at those numbers, what's jumping out for you in that report and what led to the higher than expected print? Oh, well, thanks for having me on. So yeah, another not great report, two in a row. Um, and I think when I looked at this report, you know, three things kind of jumped out. Number one, in services that aren't housing, this was pretty strong and the strength was relatively broad based. So a little bit of stickiness in the biggest category in the, the Fed's choice index, uh, PCE. And then number two, on the goods front, when we look at goods inflation, excluding vehicles, uh, this was the strongest print in quite a while, the first appreciably positive print that we've had. So I think it could be a signal that this kind of run of supply chain healing goods deflation might be coming to an end. But then point number three is a little bit more on the relieving side. And that's when we look at shelter inflation, specifically OER, which is a big category, the biggest in CPI, um, that came down a bit. And that's after a surprisingly strong August. So a bit of a mixed report, and I think the fundamentals still say that disinflation is ahead of us, um, but we might be, you know, it, not, as, uh, not as quickly as some of the reports earlier this year or last year were indicating. So turning to Fed reaction as well here, uh, Andy, Fed's daily said yesterday she was less concerned now about resurgent inflation than about the labor markets. Are there reasons to worry that inflation could make a comeback? Yeah, so, you know, I think the Fed's focus is still going to be largely on the labor market. And I think when we think about inflation, kind of the fundamentals, uh, the fundamentals are still pretty good. We have a labor market that in many senses is that more balanced than it's been. We have productivity growth that's been a lot better. And we have commodities that overall are still kind of weaker than they have been in the past. So I think that's still a story for disinflation ahead. Um, but for the Fed, um, you know, I think the relatively strong prints we've had recently kind of way towards a more measured pace of cuts. So instead of the 50 basis point cut that we got in September, I think the way forward is going to be 25 basis points. And indeed, that's our expectation for both November and December. So Andrew, you mentioned the labor market there as well. More data today. U.S. initial jobs claims rose to the highest in over a year. How should investors read into these numbers after a bumper September payrolls report? Yeah, so I think there's some weather-related effects in the claims data today. Uh, when we look at the state-level claims data, North Carolina was about 8,000 more than usual. Some of the other Gulf states kind of got us to about 15,000 uh, more than typically the case. So I think weather's at play. Um, there are some oddities happening in other states. Michigan was a lot higher than typical. Maybe that has to do with some auto-related things, something to keep an eye on. Um, but I do think that kind of the hurricane effects that we are anticipating to see at some point, this is the first data that we're seeing it. And we should probably see that continue. And I think importantly, uh, when we look ahead to October payrolls, that's likely to be impacted as well. But the Fed knows that. So I think what's important here when we think about the Fed again is the Fed's probably going to be taking more signal from that strong September payrolls report than any kind of imminent weakness that we get in this claims data and then in the October payrolls report that we'll get next month. And you mentioned that you see now a 25 base point cut from the Fed in November. That's the same with the consensus view on the markets. Is this now an almost certainty? Well, I don't know if it's a, a certainty per se, but I think, you know, what the minutes really told us was that the decision to go 50 basis points in September was, I think, largely a Powell driven decision. And I think there was some agreement on the committee to go for 50 in September, but then to probably be a little bit more conservative going forward, as long as the labor market overall remains solid. And there was a little bit of wobbliness through the summer in the labor market, but I think the most recent data and not only labor market data, but just overall data, activity data, spending data, is telling us that this is a really strong economy and that the labor market is probably going to be holding up. And therefore, I think the Fed is going to be comfortable just going by a more measured pace going forward than it started this cutting cycle. So finally, Andy, you did mention those Fed minutes uh, released yesterday. They did reveal a divide about the size of easing in its September decision. So with today's data in mind, will be spurring more disagreement among policymakers? <laughs> 
Well, I don't know if it's going to be spurring more disagreements per se, but I think on the committee, there's certainly a bit of a divide where we do have some doves who are really locked in on the labor market. Um, and there are still some hawks that aren't completely comfortable with where inflation is yet. And you know, just like this data today does show that inflation still is above target. Um, service inflation still looks like a bit hot. Um, and if the labor market is strong or strengthens, accelerates going forward, and maybe some of this productivity data we're seeing is more about mismeasurement than a real signal, then we could be a little bit more cautious on inflation. I think that's kind of what's happening in the hawk's head. So I think what's important here is Powell's okay with some debate on the committee. Um, I think the notion that he needed complete consensus uh, to start this cu cutting cycle didn't apply. So I think we can continue to have some tension, some disagreement, um, but ultimately I think Powell is Gonna, gonna lead this committee uh, towards continuing to cut towards neutral at a relatively expeditious pace. Andy Schneider at BNP Paribas, thank you very much for your thoughts. And that's Market Insights. Don't forget you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.